um, uh, mean that you've been assigned something with no choice. Uh, the, ar- the argument is this. No rational being, no rational spirit seeks to place themselves in isolation uh, or to torture themselves. Now, a lower mind might do that. A, a mind in distress, a mind confused might do that, but certainly not something that is part of the divine, such as our soul, would seek to be as irrational and illogical as separating itself from the universe. It, it is part of the universe. You're connected to the universe, so you can't separate yourself. Only irrational thought or an argumentative or a legal fictional um, argument would want to go down that path. So everyone is ipso facto a member of one heaven because your divine self wishes to be and consents. Now, if your lower self wakes up and wishes to redeem that membership, then that is great. And that is what we encourage and encourage people to go and do. But it does not change that fact. Now, that is all done very clearly in the covenant and it's done very clearly in the canons. That's the first. The second is the question of uh, canons that um, may have issues with them and being refined. The canons are being refined all the time and the canons uh, are, are are designed to... Uh, be clear as a body of law. And the question someone says is often, uh, can I still be a member of one heaven and choose, pick and choose which canons that I believe or don't believe? Being a member in the canons is the belief that the intent of the canons is true, is to believe that the whole purpose of the canons is, is true, And if there is found to be a conflict in canons, and I hope there is not, if there is, then that is an issue that needs to be obviously corrected. But the question of picking and choosing really comes down to a question of of knowledge and competence. If you belong to a society, if you belong to um, uh, any any kind of um, association, then you give a general consent to those principles. Society doesn't then allow you to say, well, I want to be a member from Monday to Friday. So the short answer is, is if you are a member and a redeemed member, then yes, by being a redeemed member, you agree to all the canons, not just some of them. Now, if people don't like that, I, I look forward to hearing and seeing that that argument is considered unfair. But that is ultimately the, the answer to the canons. It's not a uh, 30 flavour pick and choose. Now, if there are mistakes, we'll fix them. If there are errors, we'll fix them. But the purpose of the canons is to restore the law and I hope people are in a fairly unanimous agreement that from what we've discussed and what you should know, the law at the moment in the world is far from fair. So I want to clear those things up, Terry, because there are issues that come again and again and again, and I know that they've been raised uh, from a num- by a number of people in a number of forums. So thank you for letting me say that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you, Frank. All right. Now back to uh, one of the first questions I spotted on the uh, in the uh, chat is. Uh, I am a permanent resident of of Australia, don't wish to participate in the census. What are the implications of filling out and signing it? Well, the census to me, and and someone may have a difference difference to this, Um, you can play the name game when you go to court. And and by that, and I hope people um, know what I mean by the name game. The name game is, what is your name? You know, my name is Nan or my name is Franco Collins. I mean, what, you know, the name game in terms of of, uh, jurisdiction and and all of that really is one of those sidetracks where the presumption is, when you say Franco Collins, the presumption that they are assuming 
is that uh, by answering the name, they've got personal jurisdiction and jurisdiction moving on. I believe that the census, because I do, have not seen any information to the contrary, I believe the census is another example where people uh, may feel that uh, it is um, uh, a trap. The whole thing's a trap, so they feel that that's a trap, that if they participate in it, that they um, effectively are consenting. The law of necessity says that if you don't do a census, they're going to have someone come around and hassle you. I'd simply go VC. You choose to fill it in as, as you will. Um, they're compelling you, uh, so they are not doing it of free will. You choose not to. They're saying if you don't, we'll fine you. Therefore, by compelling you, by necessity, you, you choose to do what you choose to do. But I don't believe in the context of it that it puts you any more or any less under their will. The fact is that the system is still functioning today on the presumption that you are a obedient slave, you've got your birth certificate, got your driver's license or whatever else, the census is not going to add more or less to it. That's my personal opinion. Now, some might have a vehemently different view. And they might say the information truly is seen as a contract and a, and a deep contract, and I may be forced at some point to rescind what I say. But I certainly believe that if you are compelled to do anything, and the census is one of those, then you are perfectly entitled to put VC with your name um, and to answer it as uh, you see fit. But I don't see that anything in this... In, in, I don't think, see there's anything sinister at this point in the way the census is used. So please, if people have a, a differing view and they feel that the census is a key part of their contractual system, then, then I, I look forward to it. But I haven't done enough to come to a differing opinion at the moment of the census. Okay, so uh, as a continued part of this question, how do I give up my permanent residency status effectively becoming a non-resident? From our same uh, participant that asked the question about the census. Well, I actually think the census is part of that potentially in, in identifying who you, you think you are. But this is about perfecting the whole um, affidavit of truth, proof of life, and the material that, that I have promised that we will be upgrading uh, from one heaven to the court sites and uh, it's it's really it's really the fact that we haven't um, uh, I haven't had the chance to update those packages and material with the help and with the guidance and only with others doing uh, you know putting a lot together because we've been fishing the cannons so part of what is being planned is that on the court sites there will be a suite of examples uh, of material that you can consider for your own situation in perfecting your status and standing. And that will include the refinement of the ecclesiastical deed poll process, but that is not ready yet. So I can't point you to page X and say, if you do this, this is how to do it. Uh, it it will, won't be too much longer. I know there are a number of people external to UK that have different uh, examples, but I can't yet show you for at least another couple of weeks exactly where to go and say, this is what you do. Okay, but it, it is going to be done. Well, okay, Frank. So if what Lynn is, uh, was just speaking of earlier regarding the being pronounced uh, dead when we're actually living uh, for the purposes of the vital statistics or the uh, uh, them to create an entity or uh, whatever they're going to do, then the, the question would be, um, what is the purpose and what are they trying to accomplish with the census? It's that there are impersonators or, you know, it just seems very, it just seems odd. And so really there's another question that leads into that. Um, regarding doing the, the EDP for the vital statistics? Well, okay. I mean, what, what's important... What's important is, is their system, apart from being extraordinarily convoluted and complex, 
is an overlay of a number of imperatives. One is they have recognised that power is very much about staying within that middle path of the universe. They, they realised that the, the black magicians realised a long time ago that the universe is amoral. They teach us to say the universe is moral. In other words, if you do bad things, then ultimately some divine creator is going to say, you've been bad, you go to hell. That's how they teach us. They teach us to believe the universe is very much not just moralistic, but absolutely moralistic, when in actual fact they have hedged their bets for thousands of years on the universe being amoral. In other words, if they don't tread on the spirit and and <clears throat> force you to do something against your will and run the world literally as a visible prison, then they can get away with it because it's always our consent by our mind doing the things to ourselves by believing they're rubbish. So the census and other things, when you look at them from the point of view of the ancient rites, and that every seven years there was supposed to be a survey, and this all goes back to the Celtic rites, that they've maintained a lot of ritual in their system. One, because it's a curse, so we're constantly being cursed, and because we consent, we curse ourselves. A lot of it is that ritual, and a lot of it is also to maintain presumption. So it's all intertwined. Now, the unraveling of this is to unravel what is presumption, what is ritual, what is curse, all of these histories, and that's what we've been doing to see things for what they are. And I think the census is a little bit of all those things. Yeah? Right. And it goes back to earlier uh, what, what you mentioned in, with it all being about mind control. At this, oh, it's, this, all, it's all about mind control. Right. <laughs> all of it, yeah. Right, right. So, okay. Well, let's go to the phones. We have um, Ron real quick. We've got Lynn ready to come back on. And uh, so, let's. Uh, Ron, are you there? Hi, Terry. Hi, Frank. How's how's it going? Hi. Yeah, good. 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 Hey, Frank. First, um, when you were cut off, you were about ready to explain what we were supposed to do on August fifteenth. Uh, you were talking about the Bank of International Settlements, and yeah. and then then you went away for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there was a conspiracy. I think it was me. No. Uh, okay. No. Look, yeah the the original the the, the original uh, curse in staying the money system was the 666 ounces of gold. Right. And. I was looking at, at, at mirroring back to end that curse, and we, we will be doing a mirror back. But the thing that got me was we're really dealing with rotten, rotten, rotten people, like really rotten people in a rotten organisation based on rotten and false presumptions. Um, I'll agree. I, yeah, I, I, I really, really... Um, uh, I, I really don't want to be um, in that situation where we are giving something valuable to them um, uh, when they don't deserve it. Oh. Okay. Um, can others hear me? Um, I just got a message that I might have been cut off. Can You can hear me, Ron. Can fine. others hear me? You're fine. Yes, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gerald was just saying that he couldn't hear me. Um, so I'm looking at the present presentation um, that we send that ultimately is going to be something less cup in hand and more in line with with uh, popping their balloon. So that's been the delay, and I will come back to that, and I know that the, to the clock's ticking, but, um, you know, the hardest thing in mind with these people... Um, the hardest thing is that we believe um, we believe what they tell us, yeah? Right. So I'm going to uh, come back to you, and I'm sorry the delay's been there, yeah? That's okay. All right. I have, I have more things to say, 